This is Juan Brown back at the Orville Spillway, and it's Tuesday, the 4th of April, and you're watching the Blanco Lirio Channel. And the big news here today is that later on this week, we should have the big reveal for the plan to get this busted spillway through next flood season. I brought with me a Nikon D90 camera with a good lens so we get a good look up there of what that spillway looks like today. Hopefully later on this week, DWR will have additional drone footage of what it looks like up at the head of the spillway. We ain't got time to wait for them. We'll get our own pictures. So let's take a look at these close-up pictures of the spillway with the Nikon D90 camera. First, let's do the numbers, and on the national news, we learned that uh, President Trump has approved $540 million for California disaster relief from this year's pounding winter weather, of which $274 million are authorized for this, Oroville. And I venture to guess that most of that money has already been spent as the month of February cost $100 million alone. So for the numbers as of this morning, the 4th of February, the reservoir elevation stands at 843 feet. Remember, they shut it off at 835 feet, and we're going, and it is going to be allowed to rise on up to about 860, 865 feet before they got to turn that busted spillway on again. It's rising at a rate of about 12 inches per day. Out of the Hyatt power plant located right up there is an outflow of about 10,500 CFS. So they got five out of six tur turbines, turbines turning, producing about 10,5 of outflow, 10,500 cubic feet per second. Inflows have been very stable. We've had this nice long stretch of dry weather and the snow in the Sierra continues to melt but as as the <laughs> the snow in sierra is more commonly called sierra concrete and uh during this time of year the snow tends to settle and get very hard and very well frozen at night so it's like an ice block on your back porch slowly melting away so even though we have 164 percent of average not above average but of average snowpack in the high sierra the snow is melting gradually enough to provide an even inflow right now of about 14 to 16,000 CFS. So 14 to 16 in and about 10, five out. That's allowing the reservoir to rise slowly at about 12 inches or less per day. Right now, the elevation of that diversion pool in front of us stands at 223 feet. Remember about 225 feet is about the optimum level for operation of the Hyatt power plant. So that's right within the perfect limits. And that of course is being maintained by all this heavy equipment getting the last of this debris out of this diversion pool. To date, 1.42 million cubic yards of debris have been removed from this diversion pool. How much debris came out of the last spill? 
they don't have those numbers or I was unable to get those numbers, but it's a small fraction of what came out of this diversion pool the first time when this canyon was carved. So if you look at the length of the arms on these excavators, they're digging very deep to get this debris out of here. That's why they got to have such small buckets on these excavators and the work appears to proceed relatively slowly. They're limited to the size of the buckets they can use with these long armed excavators. Getting them onto these trucks, some of this debris is still being piled up here in the uh, uh, benches next to the emergency spillway and some of this debris is being carted by barge downstream and stored temporarily down by the diversion dam. Big changes on this slope over here you can see they are beginning the stabilization of the slope by terracing it to help prevent any erosion from this slope or any further erosion of this slope threatening to spill into the diversion pool and potentially cutting it off or at least adding a lot more unnecessary debris to the diversion pool. And there goes another barge of debris downstream. Here they're transferring it. Meanwhile, up on the spillway, work continues to stabilize that spillway Geotech drilling uh, continues to go on up there as they investigate the bedrock underneath the spillway. Check the security of the anchor bolts and look at the shot creek. You can see a lot of the shot creek is still in place from the last spill. But just below that shot creek on the left side, I see a new relatively large hole of erosion. It was not there, it was not that big last time we looked at this spillway. Nevertheless, it looks like the erosion on the head of that spillway is controlled at this time, controlled enough to get us certainly through this season. As the water leaves the diversion pool here and gets down to the diversion dam, at the diversion dam only 3,000 CFS are being released directly back into the Feather River. The remaining uh, water is being flushed through the aqueduct over to the Thermalito forebay and after bay, ensuring that those two water systems are full and then being released back into the Feather River downstream at a rate of 6,500 CFS at the outlet of the after bay. So the Thermalito forebay and after bay is our insurance policy, is the insurance policy in the event that something should happen to the Hyatt power plant and they close that down, that water in the Thermalito forebay and after bay is what's going to be used to keep the Feather River alive. Had a nice chat with Lauren Bisnett, the Deep Department of Water Resources Information Officer here at Oroville. By the way, there's going to be a couple of job openings for a public information officer based right here at Oroville. <laughs> so if you can get out in front of the camera like this, they definitely need your help. I already got a day job and the pay ain't too bad either. Anyways, we also, uh, besides chatting about the current events here and the future plan coming up later this week, I also talked to her about that over alarming sensationalist article in the Sacramento Bee regarding the secrecy here at Department of Water Resources. What the Sacramento Bee is confusing, their facts is, well as an Air Force pilot you get used to working with classified information and the different levels of classification. Here in the infrastructure world, post 9-11, there's something called critical energy infrastructure information which is basically on a need-to-know basis and that kind of information would be extremely detailed information for example like the electrical schematic to the Hyatt power plant. This really has nothing to do with the release of the plan for what the future of Oroville is going to be as the article in the Sacramento Bee would leave you, lead you to believe. That information is going to come out in a very public forum later on this week. If there's any extremely technical details that fits the critical energy infrastructure 
requirement, yeah, well, that'll be potentially held from the public. But that'd be such detailed information that it wouldn't even, in my opinion, add much or subtract much to the story. Regarding the information as to what caused this disaster, that's all gonna become readily apparent in the reports that come out on the after actions of this disaster. Regarding prior inspections of this dam and spillway, that information is out there on the internet right now and it is not held from public view. The weather's just been great the last couple of weeks here. We do have some weather coming uh, Friday, Saturday, this weekend that folks are watching closely. However, we're in a completely different weather cycle here in Northern California in the springtime. It's beginning to get very warm down here in the valley and our chances for precipitation, heavy precipitation, becomes much more remote. Much fewer storms this time of year, much less precipitation. It's springtime in Northern California. So much of the same recovery work continues today as it has been going on for these last couple of weeks. Removing of the debris from the Thermolito diversion pool, stabilizing the busted spillway, the upper portion of it, continually inspecting it and monitoring it, mapping of the gorge, geological uh, tech inspections of the rocks and the structure of the gorge, checking of the material that's here in the spillway and figuring out what part of the gorge that came from, stabilizing the slopes upstream of the gorge, keeping the Hyatt power plant operating, and continuing to build the benches and finish off any finish work with the emergency spillway above. Meanwhile, the plans are all getting worked up and we're looking for later on this week to hopefully find out what the plan is. How are we gonna get through next flood season here at the Oroville Spillway? Stay tuned. And my reports here at Oroville may get a little less frequent. Remember, we started out almost every two days doing an update when things were very critical. But as things begin to stabilize here, as we go into the spring and summer months, these updates will be a little less frequent. What on earth am I ever I gonna do with myself? I'm gonna have to find a new story. Right now I gotta catch a flight to Dallas. See you here.